Should I change my background or is it? Oh no, that looks stunning, eh? All right, okay. cool. All right, here we go. What's up, everybody? Today I've got an amazing guest joining us to talk about photography and videography in Japan. I got Bradley, aka Disco Sigs. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you for having me, man. And thank you. Mm. I'm glad to be here <laughs> on Zoom, I guess. <laughs> 100%. Okay. So uh, just to start, um, how did you come up with the name Disco Sigs? You know, I get that question so often. Uh, it's actually a funny story. So uh, it originally used to be called Disco Cigarettes. Like that was my elongated name. And then I shortened it to Disco Sigs when I started trying to be a little more like family friendly. And I started doing more weddings back in the States. I shortened it so Disco Cigarettes doesn't sound like a company you'd want to hire oh. for your wedding. And Disco Cigs is just a little bit better. But anyway, so believe it or not, I was working at a grocery store when I was in university. And that's when I first picked up a camera. Actually, this is before I picked up a camera, I'm sorry. So okay. I was working at a grocery store when I was in the States and college and a university. Okay. And I wanted okay. to be a DJ. Oh, I, I don't know America so well, but if I had mm. to guess by your accent, you, you are maybe it. from. Okay, you can you can give me like a hint or two, one or two. No, no, go ahead. I I, I just want to see what, east, you, what you think. <laughs> east, uh, east coast. Any? Okay. How far are you from the east coast? I'm, I don't hear a lot I'm, of west coast. I'm on the east. I'm on the east. Okay, somewhere in the east. Are we going more southern or northern? I think southern. Yeah, east southern, but south. Yeah. Okay, a bit south, more south. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. could you say water bottle? <laughs> water bottle. Okay, water bottle. Virginia, water bottle. maybe? How far are you Ooh. from Virginia? Uh, a little bit further south. Further south, okay. Flo nah, not too Florida. I, I, I know on your Instagram, you're in, a, in Atlanta at one point, but I don't hear a lot of Atlanta in your accent. So I don't think you started in Atlanta, uh, but you visit Atlanta yeah. sometimes. <laughs> uh, okay, what is the state famous for? Well, so yeah, you're right. I wasn't born in Atlanta. Mm. Mm. And what is the state famous for? My state, slavery. Oh, <laughs> okay. it's extreme it's just, slavery. Oh, <laughs> that, no, seriously, that's that's the biggest thing to come out of my cotton, cotton, a lot of cotton. Mississippi. Yeah, I'm from Mississippi, man. Oh, Mississippi. you never guess it. You would have never get Mississippi as my birthplace. You would have never got it. Yeah, I, I know I don't have that accent, but I moved around a lot. So I was. Oh, wow. Yeah, I started it. I was born in Mississippi, moved mm -hmm. to Arkansas, then Tennessee, actually Memphis, Tennessee, oh, and then cool. I moved to Atlanta when I was 13, actually. And I lived there until I was 27. Yeah. So wow. 13 years, 14 years, about mm. 14, 15 years in Atlanta. Yeah. Mm. So for now, I'm, I say I'm Atlanta. Atlanta raised me. Like that's when I mm. became who I am. Like that's what mm. showed me the person I am. Before that, I was nothing. I was just a kid. Just nothing, oh, wow. knew nothing. So yeah, when I got to Atlanta is when I really started hanging out and learning things about life. So I'm basically from Atlanta, yeah. Atlanta is such a hub of culture. So myself as an outsider, just looking at the world through the internet and magazines, mm -hmm. it doesn't do it justice, but could you just describe just what a movie uh, Atlanta is? Okay, so right now- Atlanta Spinners, like... rims, codeine, just- Okay, so there's an image of Atlanta. There's a, there's a huge <laughs> image of Atlanta right now. Chicken and waffles. And... It's- it's yeah. Atlanta is all of that though. To be, to oh, be yeah. honest, Atlanta is all of that. Mm. But before all of that, it was just this really multicultural city. That's the yeah. one thing I like about Atlanta. It's just like you, when you go to a party, you're gonna see everything at that party, and like you're gonna get influenced. So every party you at, you're gonna hear Latin music. Like I, you're not gonna hear that in Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna hear Latin music. You're gonna mm. hear like the top forties, the EDMs. So that's where we came from. Like we would mm. be in these little shithole clubs, but we'd be hearing techno, EDM, Latin, and gangster trap at the same time. And it's 
all mixing together. And that's where you get these crazy new genres like trap music, like the EDM mm-hmm. version of trap music. Mm-hmm. It came from listening to, you know, a track and then TI together and like mixing it all together, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And that's how you got that trap sound. And like the producers out there, they started running with like Gucci Mane mm. and Zaytoven. They came up with that very, that now hip hop trap sound mm. that's so prevalent now with the hi hats and the 808s and stuff like that. They really started hitting that a lot. Mm. And that's kind of where, where I feel like it took off and it just got, I don't, I guess maybe EDM trap is what made like it kind of pop open. Mm. Like, nationwide but mm. like after that then atlanta just took off with it because we had like waka Whoa. flocka through our own those trap beats and stuff like that and you know just produce like lil john and stuff like that Whoa. putting out heavy hitters and stuff like that from from atlanta but um yeah it's it's really all of that it's great food and like everybody is friends with every group of people Whoa. there that's the one thing like <clears throat> like i grew up mostly surrounded by like people who look like me like black people right mm. and african-americans but once I got to high school, well, when I got to high school, like it was just a mix of mostly a lot of uh, um, white people and black people mostly. But then mm-hmm. after Katrina, it kind of like Katrina, I was around, I was in Atlanta during Katrina. A mm-hmm. lot of people came from New Orleans and you got mm-hmm. a lot more culture mixing. And a lot of people from other places like Florida and stuff like that started coming. And a lot of people from New York, believe it or not, came down wow. from Atlanta when I was in high school around the same time. So we had all of that. And then when I got to college and I started really just going out, that's when I started just meeting all of these different people. And I'm like, okay, now I'm like, I just learned so much from like, I learned, you know, I'm a big foodie kind of guy. Like I mm, love mm. trying new food. So like, that was the me- first thing that got me is like, yo, hanging out with like Latin people. So I went to university mm. in Mexico for a little while. So when I came okay. back, I was on my Spanish vibe. What, what was the name of the university? Of, uh, university of Guadalajara. Yeah, University oh, of Guadalajara. Yeah. I, I know the Tribe Coast Quest song. I left my wallet in um, <laughs> it, in El Segundo. El Segundo? Yeah, but like... Oh, no. So, man. okay, so so I, yeah. I see you're quite a journeyman and you've been yeah, around that, quite well, a few that's, places. Yeah, that's where it all started. That's where my traveling started, actually. And my mm-hmm. first international travel was me going to Mexico to study mm-hmm. abroad. And, that, and on that trip, I met so many different people that I'd never really had conversations mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. and going out, I went out like, you know, we, I was 19, 20, 20, mm-hmm. I was 20. And I went to the club, like a real club that wasn't a black club and mm-hmm. not, not just hip hop. Mm-hmm. And I had a good time and I was like, okay, so they were playing I like, like EDM this. EDM or what were they playing? Yeah, they were playing completely EDM and house mm-hmm. music and I had never heard it in my life. And all the people are dancing with the... Yeah, it's, yeah, and they were going crazy and you know, like, <laughs> I'm 20 years old. It was my first clubbing experience. Oh, wow. I'm like, man, I can get in on this. So when I came back, I was looking for that. That's actually mm. how I got into, like, I was looking for that. So I started hanging out at Spanish clubs. Spanish clubs are cool, but then I started mm. hanging out at, like, more international spots where they mm. play a mixture. And mm. then that's where, I, I'll tell you, I got introduced to this party called Fuck Yes. That's the name of it. Fuck Yes. Fuck Yes. Held this was in the, Atlanta. The name of the name of the party is Fuck Yes. Anybody alive at that time and like around the 20s mm. or 30s, they will tell you this is the best party in Atlanta at the time. Fuck it Yes in insane. Atlanta. Yeah, the, the name of it was Fuck Yes with three S's. Okay. Like it was insane. Could, could, could you just there. just describe? So this sounds it's like exactly a movie, the opening of the scene. So you go there, <laughs> cars, because everyone knows a good party, you can tell from the outside. You look at the line. This thing, you look this at is the, the thing, is yeah. that you would never know because it was literally in a fucking hole in the ground. It was in a hole in the ground, sir. It was like it was like like a way go to. It's like it's. I don't even know how to describe. It. It's like a hobbit hole. Like you know how okay. the hobbits live in the hill. It's like yeah. a hill, but you have to go down, and it's like yeah. literally if it rains, it's getting flooded out. Like it's oh, just sad. the dirtiest grimiest place you can it's imagine a cheap I'm, venue yeah, it's, but it was happening. yeah it's like everyone wants to go. it's it's dark it's wet it's mm. sweaty but the djs there are spinning you know edm mixed with hip-hop mixed with latin mixed with trap and all this other stuff and they're playing experimental like old, just doing whatever yeah, they want they're playing yeah. so they're playing like the old atlanta booty bass music you know mm. like from way back in the day and mm. then and then you got like the newer current like gucci Mane, the ti kind of stuff mm. and waka flocka and then you got like the edm trap as they became known mm. as, and they were mixing that all. And that party was just insane every month. And I just Around about what that. year was this? This was like that's, early 2090s? Early that 2000s. Is, 
No, no, no. That was later. That was around 2000. Sorry, it was like 2010, 11. Okay, so That's Facebook when was I, out. When I, when I got, and it was yeah, like yeah, Facebook, Facebook events. Out. Someone would tell you. Yeah. Po- you still needed to put posters around town. But I yeah, think around about yeah. that time, it was when Facebook albums were like a thing and people were putting pics on Facebook. And if you yeah, could that, see good pics, you went there. That I remember actually the first time I went to that party, I, I got a, a paper flyer that said, fuck yes. And I was like, yo, this looks dope. <laughs> you know? so Photoshop flyer. Really, was yeah. it a color flyer or yeah. just a cheap black and white? It was color. It was color. You know, it was, it was dope flyer. Like that's another thing. Atlanta's so artistic too, as mm. well. And like the designs for all of these flyers and, this is the reason I got into photography too. Mm. The the guy that was the first party I went to with a photo booth, mm. it had a photo booth, and the guy who did the photo booth was also the guy who made the flyers. Mm. But, you can see, um, you can see booth, where I'm trying to lead this to. So, what did yeah. that flyer look like? If you oh. that, did you have a picture of Beyonce on it, and <laughs> everyone knew she's not coming. <laughs> it, wasn't, it, was, but it, it wasn't. It, it wasn't. No, no, no. It was some, wasn't. Or some Swedish supermodel in like a bikini come 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 okay. to this party, and you're like, that, that's that, every that's other college. That's used to, Yeah, yeah. That's literally every other college party you go mm-hmm. to. Like every other college party you went to in Atlanta got, got the big booty model mm-hmm. on it. You know, I ain't never gonna be at yeah. the party, but you're still gonna go because it's there. I used to the design those. Have power. So I was in school. Yeah. Yeah, I was in school for graphic design, so I used to help design flyers like that mm. for the, for like the, the hip hop parties. Mm. But then this flyer was completely different. It had like okay. actual art, like people had drawn like pictures and things like that, okay. and like pictures of the DJs and stuff like that, just doing crazy things like drinking a can of PBR or like spray paint. And it was just like it was actual artistic design okay. put into the flyers. So what was like the font? Did that like fuck yeah? At like the top. It was a. Or like all it was over. a distressed font, but it was hand created, like Ooh, a distressed okay, so hand like created calligraphy. font. Yeah, yeah, like but not yeah. calligraphy. It was a uh, like a block, like a what's the thing I could I could probably like you used a marker to. or you used like a spray can. It was like a like um like a bubble. I oh, have the, like that that sort like of a, graffiti, that graffiti style. Kind of like a, yeah, kind of like a yeah. graffiti style. Okay. Yeah, I could say like a graffiti style. So it was written style. fuck yeah. What what color yeah. was was the writing? It's like a yellow. Usually, it was like bright. It was always a brightly colored. Flyer. Bright and loud. Yeah, brightly colored. Like you you notice the flyer every time okay. you see it. And the background like probably, of the flyer. Uh, it's like yellow fuck yeah and bubble writing, and then it the back every month. Believe it oh, not. but like the first one you saw flyer. where it caught your eye, and you're like, I have to go. Yeah, it was orange flyer. and black. Yeah, I remember the first okay. one was like orange and black and yellowish or something like that. Mm. And ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, uh. so actually, I found. All right. Oh no, I just actually. Oh, I just clicked out of it. I mm. literally just found uh, one of the images of the um, flyer. Okay, maybe oh, afterwards right. we'll. I'll try get yeah, it from I'll, you, I'll and I'll try. I'll try. Yeah. I'll, I'll try put it in the video. Yeah. So would you say but, uh, that particular moment you saw that flyer, that effect, that you know you know it wasn't until i got to the party honestly i went to the party and it was just like like i said it was just sweaty and mayhem it was Mm. just sweaty mayhem good music good vibes and and the girls and the drinks yeah and girls the girls (laughs) was there and the drinks were like three dollars it was just ridiculous like it was like like, this is me this is my vibe i'm gonna be coming again and again and again must have stopped yeah Mm. yeah and then like all right so here's a picture Oh, you can't even see it because of that. Oh man, no, don't stress. I'll, but, uh, I'll get it from you afterwards and we'll, we'll throw it in. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so yeah, it was just like pure chaos. Like mm. it was like a chaotic good for me. <laughs> just like mm. so much chaos, but everything was like good vibe. There was no, like, you know, when you go to hip hop parties, there's a lot of tension <laughs> in the air and people are trying to one up each other. Mean talking, like, people, are sweat- people are sweaty. People are like, girls are half naked. Like sometimes they would be naked in the party, oh, like man. sweat, like sweaty covered, like naked and just He's like- He's got Jordan ones party. on. Don't step on my Jordans. Like, I brought them here so you yeah. can't step on them. But you never had, you didn't have to deal with that at this party. Like everybody's sweaty and, and mm. drunk and just having a good time. You wear mm. whatever you, you can try to look nice if you want to, is you're mm. going to sweat it out and you're going to be mm. shirtless. I, I was shirtless by the end of the event most of the time. Mm. But the thing that I, I, I noticed most about that party was the photographer. Mm. And he had a photo booth and he, he would photo by, he would, you know, people coming to jump in the booth, like all the DJs, like all the people who were regulars at the party would jump in the booth. And so I got, got in the booth and then you could always look forward to seeing your pictures from that night, like within a week. He would put, and you would like, you like. Mm-hmm. Do you remember what camera he was using? 
Or could you recognize it? Yeah, at the time? he was using a at the time he was using a Canon 5D Mark II, I believe. Oh, this guy was serious. Okay. Yeah, okay. no, no, no. This is like this is legit. He had like a uh, Alien B light and everything, like a serious for a party. This man is doing a, party, a photo like, shoot at a party. Yeah, he had, he would have like a green screen, like a, a green screen, like like this behind party. me kind of thing, and at every party. But he would design the background of the green screen, and every party would have a different image on the background. Oh. And so that's what made it so cool. Like I you wanted to be serious, in these photos, eh? and you look forward to these photos. Every every everybody's like, "Wow, I can't wait till those fuck yes photos come." You I came can't for wait. I want to post it on Facebook. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want to come. Yeah, like that was a big part of it. Like, of course you can have a good time, but you got to get at least one photo in the photo booth. And that photo booth was my whole thing. And so maybe my like a year. After a year of doing that partying, I met mm. a guy in one of my art classes mm. who was doing that job. He was working as he had he came in with a big ass with a big ass backpack on one day in the class. I'm like, yo, what you got in your backpack? We yeah. was in an art class. What you got in your backpack? He said, like, I got a camera, man. He had a T a Canon T2i. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. And he had like a flash, like, what you got going on? He's like, oh, I'm shooting tonight. I'm like, what you shooting? He's like, Oh, I'm at a club. I'm like, oh, word. He's like, Yeah, man, you should come out. It's so much fun, bro. I'm like, what, what's it like shooting in the club? He's like, man, it's so much fun. Like you get to drink as much as you want. The girls all over you and you get paid for it. And I was like, mm -hmm. that I mean, sounds kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like literally I was like, that sounds kind of interesting. Cause I seen this guy at the party that I've been going to doing it, but I didn't really know. I didn't know the photographer, but I mm -hmm. saw, I know I wanted to be in that photo booth. Mm -hmm. And so um, I met this guy, this guy, his name is Javier. He's, mm -hmm. um, he's huge. He's, doing big things now in Atlanta, mm. doing his photography. Shout out okay. to him. Okay, Javier, do you, do you call his... Javier, 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 Javier on Macintosh. Instagram? Okay, that, brothers. I'll definitely, I'll look him up. It sounds, yeah, it sounds hard. Yeah. Cool. His, him and his brother, both uh, Jabril. Jabril actually came to visit me uh, in Tokyo once. Oh, wow. I showed him around. His brother's, a, uh, he's like a filmmaker, videographer. He's done a mm. lot of stuff. He's done work for like BT. He's done work for like... Walk so it's like in their blood. Like These are like creative people man yeah yeah it's 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 definitely they well them two as a team they they're, mm -hmm. they're, their company's called macintosh brothers they became a team and they really just got out and did it and that's the guy who introduced me into into photography so i wow. so i went to visit him at work one night at club and i just saw how much fun this guy was having and getting paid to do it and i'm just like man wow. that looks cool you know mm -hmm. so for christmas i'm like yo <laughs> ask mom i say hey ma i want a camera <laughs> for wow. christmas to be honest that's how I, and um she's like ah oh, i can't really afford it but uh you can you know if you they were expensive eh? line, yeah when yeah, the canon man, t2i's gotta... first came out like first time i saw it it was like seeing a weapon like a like a got... 47 i'm like wow that thing is you can do damage with that yeah. Then I saw the price tag and I'm like, oh, that's out of my budget. Hey, I'm going to have to stick to the yeah. power shot <laughs> point and shoot. So that's not, just how I'm going to yeah. have to roll. Yeah, I ended up getting on, you know, the little Best Buy pay, pay as you go plan. Yeah. <laughs> but we got it and I got it. And, you know, what is your first lens? I started uh, the kit lens was the 1855. 18 yeah, the 1855 3.5 yeah. to 5. Mm -hmm. And then I also bought a, what was it? A tripod? Uh, no, no. Sam, yeah? uh, did it? It came with a no, no. It came with a can. I got another kit lens. Um, Tamron. A, 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 the same a thing. The same thing in the same kit. It, it yeah, it was a telephoto. telephoto. It was like an eighty yeah. to two hundred. It was an yeah, eighty yeah. to two fifty or something like that. Seventy yeah, to yeah. fifty, something like that. Anyway, I got one of those. I sold that thing like immediately. It was trash, but it was like one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, it was straight trash. But I, the first lens I bought after the fact was mm. a fifty one point eight. Oh. That was the first lens I bought after. Then you feel the like the shit when the fifty when you get that first sharp photo with the bokeh. Yeah, like, no, no yeah. one can mess I was with like, me. Okay, no one can I was mess like, with okay. me. Okay, then you yeah, put video then... and get shaky video. You're like, no one can mess with me. I'm a movie director now. So yeah, I'm that's what my friend told me. He's like, <laughs> he told me that to get the T2i because it does 1080p video. He told me that. So he's like, yo, I like the T2i because you can do video and photo, and I do both. And I was like, all right, cool. So I took his advice. I literally went out and bought the exact same camera he had <laughs> and everything. But um, the first so you, you put it at Best Buy. Yeah, I bought all of that at the Best Buy, and I bought Best the Buy. 50 on Amazon. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, so I bought that, and I'll say I bought that in December. Oh, I got that in December. It was Christmas. Yeah, I got mm -hmm. that in December. And I told my friend who was a DJ at the time, we had been to Miami together and he was like, oh, I'm having a Christmas, or not a Christmas, a New Year's mm -hmm. party. And I know you just got your camera. If you want to come through, take some pics, it'd be dope. And I went through, wow, took shitty straight photos to the, club, the whole eh? night. Yeah, I, I, wish, I, 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 
this, I bought this club, this camera with the intention of becoming that guy because I saw him having that much fun at the club. Oh like, so God. that was my that was my thing. I was I so was you like, bought it and you're I'm like, from now on, disco cigarettes. I am, and that's the thing. So Man. I was uh, back to the name. Mm. I had I was planning on being a DJ mm. and I disco cigarettes. I had already had the domain on Tumblr and I already had the website oh. and stuff like that. And the Instagram was disco cigarettes. My mm. Instagram had just come out, so my Instagram oh. was disco cigarettes. And that was like, all I, I need is a camera. camera. And I was like. Right, right. And I was in graphic design school. So and I was like, man, if I had a camera, I could really make these like mm. this. Um, I could do my own graphics. I could like, mm. so whenever I have to do like a project, you have to take a picture of your final design mm. and stuff like that. Mm. I was like, and that's kind of how I talked my mother into helping me get, <laughs> get out. Like, yeah, I'm gonna use this for design class, not for going out and taking clubs with chicks at the club. <laughs> but, um, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so I already had the I already had my Instagram and uh, like a Tumblr page for, mm. called Disco Cigarettes, right? Mm. And so after that, I was just like, well, I already got this. I might as well just make it. Uh, I might as well just use it as my photography name. And I was like, Disco Cigarettes. And it really did. It wasn't my actually. It wasn't my photography name per se, but once I started taking pictures, people would be like, hey, Disco Cigs or Disco Cigarettes. Like they would call uh -huh. it to me. And then I became that guy. I became wow. Disco Cigarettes again. Like, and then I was like, okay, this is Disco Cigarettes photography and design. But after a while now, it's just me. I am Disco Cigs. Mm. I am the brand Disco Cigs. Like that's, mm. so people, when people, when I meet people, they're like, what should I call you? Like, just call me Disco, Disco Cigs. Like, mm. cause that's me now, because I do so much more than just photography now. Mm. Like I do video, photo, DJ, MC, and all this other stuff, and design as well. Wow. So I can't just say disco six photography. I just say disco six is mm. is me. I'm the I'm that guy now. How did it but, feel when you first got, you got paid for your first gig with uh, all right, photography? So man, all right. So my first paid gig was actually a wedding, believe it or not, and it was wow. the person I worked with at the grocery store that I was I was working at. It was the lady. So, the so the first store. time you shot at the club, you were just shooting for free, pro bono. Yes, yes. Okay, so I shot at that party for New Year's. Photos were terrible, but I edited them and I sent it to him. He was really thankful because nobody else was doing it, and I was mm. like, cool, you know. But uh, after that, I at fuck yes at the party, mm. fuck yes, I ran into my best friend from high school, his roommate in college in mm. Statesboro, Georgia. Mm. I had met him only once, one time and I stayed with him for like a week for mm. spring break. I met him at the party and he told me, hey, like, he's like, hey bro, I've been doing photography. I don't know how we got on the, con on the conversation, but he's mm. like, yo, I've been doing photography now too. Uh, and I'm like, what you do? Let's go shoot something together. He's like, all right, cool. I know this guy across town that'll let us shoot at his club for free. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what? I'm like, bet. So me and him, we went out to this club like two or three nights and some they mm. had some little ricky events and things and we shot his name's quentin stigma mm. he's still doing his photography and video thing oh, yeah. and oh. uh but but uh we went out and we shot for free and we just mm. took some pictures or whatever just you know i know i needed to practice mm. so i wasn't really worried about getting paid at the time and then and then he got me on to this event and this is what changed it for me mm. and it, it was gonna blow you it might blow your mind when you hear it but he let's hear he it, had, let's hear it. had he he had this event and he was like hey bro I got this event you want that they I've been shooting that it's called beer and tacos the mm. name of the event was called beer and tacos mm. and um he was like I'm gonna be out of town but they need it like these guys they call records entertainment he like they mm. need a, a photographer I'll be out of town can you go shoot for me tonight I'm like yeah so I shot with them at another event that they had the same group of records for free mm. uh on, on Georgia State campus since I was still in school I shot at their event and nice. he was like yeah I'm gonna be out of town they got this other event can you go shoot it I'm like cool I'll go shoot it like I, I I, we've done those little rickety clubs enough that I know yeah. how my settings a little bit better now. Yeah. And so I go to the club and I'm like, I show up and there's this line is crazy. I'm like, so many people in there. And I'm like, man, this is like, this is the biggest party I've ever shot. Like everything oh, wow. else, like seven, eight, 10 people. You know? <laughs> like and then that. you're like, I'm the photographer. Cut that line. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Where's there. Let's take the camera there, out. Hold it in one hand. Like I'm <laughs> walking in. Like there was uh, the, the crazy thing is like, there was another, there was like two other photographers in there, but like, we was like whatever mm. but it was like two other but this i didn't realize how big this event was how, how were the other so, photographers vibe because usually we, you know when you meet other photographers cool. first you like everyone sizes each other up what cameras you got what lenses you got right right like right. i think say hi to them at the time yeah. we at this point i've been shooting for let's say five months so oh. like shooting for five months this is at, this is before my first this is after my first paid the mm. first paid wedding mm. but um i had been shooting at nightclubs for about mm. five months mm. or so like that 
But um, so I go in and I'm shooting, I'm shooting there's people everywhere, beautiful black people everywhere. I'm just mm-hmm. taking great pictures. And out of nowhere, Ludacris is sitting on the couch. Oh, and it's like, oh shit. And I'm nervous, as, you know, I'm nervous as shit, man. So I'm like, hey, Ludacris, I'm gonna go take his picture. I walk over there, Ludacris, bang, take the picture. Oh shit, Missy Elliott's here too. Bang, take the picture. Next thing I know, 30 minutes later, T.I. is walking in the door. I'm like, yo, let me get these pictures. T.I. walks in, not just T.I., T.I., DJ Drama, ASAP Rocky, and Future all walk in at the same, and they're all there at the same club. And this is like, I'm like, this is my first real club. Like, I've been shooting six people, mm. six, seven people at a time. Sign my like, camera, like, please. Just like, you know, you know, but no, you played like, cool. No, you played cool. Like, I got yeah, you. Yeah, was cool, man. You two together, together. You know, yeah, I, okay, you look good. I, I, <laughs> Like T.I. was like, T.I. was like, T.I. and Ludacris, like Ludacris, I walked up to him and asked him for a picture. I took the picture. I still have the pictures. They're on my Facebook, on my mm-hmm. Disco 6 Facebook page. Um, when you walked I'll, up to walk him, up to- like, is there like a, do you have like a technique? I've got like a technique when I ask like people for photos. I Man, find back then, I don't ask, I lead. I just walk yeah, up yeah. in there. I don't yeah, say yeah. anything. I just walk up in there and then I say, you too. You, 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 closer. Yep, closer. yep, yep. You have to. Cool. If you ask, you, you give, give them the opportunity thumbs up. to say and that stern look of like, I got you. <laughs> Walk away. You know all about Everybody's it, man. In and out. If, and I learned this in Japan as well, because you can't start off talking. No. You walk in there with authority, bro. Like I'm supposed yeah. to be. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you, hey, come on. And even when people ask me, yo, man, what, what, what camera do you have, bro? Uh, you have to manage. You have to manage expectations. You just be like, don't mm-hmm. worry about it. The camera doesn't yeah. matter. The ideas matter. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I think at this point, I think you know what I might I might have been. It might have been another photographer went first on the ludicrous day. <laughs> he took the picture, and I was like, it's "Oh, okay. me too." It's like a move it's like, <laughs> I was like, you too. have to follow through quickly. You can't come an hour yeah. later. Like follow through next, next, yeah. next yeah, one. Yeah. I was like, "Me, me," and he was like, "I right, and ludicrous." He did the little thumb. He did the yeah. little like before people ask, "Who is picture. he? Who are you with?" When they're yeah. sizing yeah. you up, you failed. Uh, who's yeah, your yeah. Uh, I was in no. there. I was you have to just be like. But but I was asked I was asked to be there for, by the organizer, so I was supposed to be there for sure. Mm-hmm. But you know, it was other people. But I was you know, just so nervous. Like I'm telling up, you, eh? that's the wackest yeah, thing. Yeah. When they size you up, yeah. uh, do you have a five D? Do you have a this? Do you have yeah. a that? Uh, nah. uh, how big yeah. is your following? I was uh, I was completely beginner at the at the time. I know I didn't even have a real speed light. It was some Tamron like twenty dollar speed light Nobody that had knew? it took like Nobody it took like knows? five seconds to recharge. So if I missed the photo, it's just like. Uh, <laughs> It took like five seconds to recharge, and it was like it was. I like to put really black bad. tape so people don't know what model I'm using. I'm just like, don't matter. And it was, it was, yeah. it was. Hey, but I got the pictures, and then after that, like, fire pixel so? with the pics fire. Yeah, the pictures are fire, man. I'll, okay. I'll send you. Made the it your cover photo. So you can check it out. Made it, made it the yeah. cover photo yeah. oh, on man. your Facebook page. I made, I made two albums, and I shared them all over, the, all over Facebook, man. I was, and you re-edit was, I them. So many pictures. You mirror, so it looks like you took multiple mirror zoom in, <laughs> black and white color. Yeah. Uh, yep, black. I shoot. I still doing the black and white thing, man. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was doing a lot of editing on those, but um, yeah, I haven't done black and white. Now all my pictures are super colorful, but yeah. Mm. Uh, I was just happy to be there, man. Mm-hmm. I got pictures of Future and ASAP. Like ASAP stepped off the stage, and the security actually was like, "Hey, can I get a picture of ASAP?" I'm like, "Sure." So I took the got picture of him and ASAP. And then, and like, like I was like, "Yo, can I get one yeah. more with you, bro?" And he's like, "Yeah." So I took a picture of ASAP, and then I actually walked up to Future. This is what Future had his first. His Future wasn't Future now. This mm-hmm. is Future in the past. This is mm-hmm. beginning Future. He only had like, <laughs> one real song bumping on the on the yeah. radio. He only had a, so he wasn't like you know big head he mm-hmm. wasn't that guy yet mm-hmm. so he was very humble when i met him he was, i was like yo you mind if i get a picture like, oh sure sure he's just like yeah, i took the picture and i was like oh cool cool man he's if a I'd real known, person I, he's human like yeah, me yeah. you know yeah, i would i would have took that selfie with him at that point if i knew what i knew now i would have t- definitely took that opportunity like, how, how were cell phone cameras bro? in that time like the selfie didn't really i think the no, selfie no, no, no. was I, always there but it wasn't like i'm talking was, camera selfie bro like yeah, I'm having the whole the whole cannon oh, up in the that air. One's wild. Yeah, camera stuff. <laughs> what, yeah. We're using a wide angle lens. So at that, mm, not yet. I didn't buy that until a couple months after that. Yeah, but that was the next lens I bought actually from the fifty. I bought a twelve, no, eleven to sixteen millimeter. Oh wow, two point eight, ten, uh, ten uh, Tokina. Oh wow. Yeah. Did that you ever get a a fisheye? The rocking on fisheye. I never. I was gonna get the Canon one. The okay. Canon. 15 millimeter but i never it was always on my wish list it was on my wish list for years yeah. but i never needed it I it's never quite an investment it. but like once yeah. you've got it for like club photography like it's, it's it becomes nice. your workhorse for but selfies that, uh, 11, to, 
it's like always in focus and you always get those nice like super clubby photos uh that's true when when i got that lens i had to stop using it because i was overusing it but when i looked at half my work it's like all that and i'm like okay i gotta calm down and even when i went to japan i'm like i'm not taking it with me it's becoming an addiction it's too much oh, really? i have to i have to stop using fisher you know so after that uh so i had that that t2i for a year after that i upgraded to a 5d mark ii and mm. i bought a 24 to 70 mm. or 2.8 to go with that oh, and so now you're a big so, dog so i had my I 20, you're a big yeah, yeah 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 so i got hired on by a nightlife company oh. around um july actually so mm. at, right after that party i took those pictures back to my mentor i was like hey man mm. i got these pictures and he's so, like so, right, so your well, mentor's I'll, name now that was javier macintosh bros javier yep javier okay. i i took them back to him i, I had business cards like, hey man mm. go check out my website i got these pictures all these celebrities and stuff mm. and like if y'all need photographers let me know and sure enough like maybe a month later they were like yeah we're looking for photographers to go on our nightlife and so we'd love to have you they sent me down for an interview got the job mm. and then I started doing it every month. And then um, actually I only worked there for three months and Javier quit. And then I, he was the director of photography for this company. And then they, they asked me to do it. So I was doing him dirty photography. No, no, no. He just was like, this dude was super motivated on his own. He didn't need it. He just like was doing his own thing. Started I, his own hustle. Like, I was like, I, res I respected that so much. Cause that's exactly the route I went like that mm. after that like once mm. i made a couple of dollars and i was able to upgrade my equipment i mm. was like all right i'm gonna bounce and do mm. my own thing and from that point on i was freelance by like wow. pure freelance yeah wow so but yeah so he um he bounced and then he was the director of photography so he was the guy over hiring and mm. so they had about i'd say about 10 uh, six to ten photographers at, some, at a given wow. time that were That's on a the creative house eh? Yeah, so they had like they were at all the all the parties. So, but so I took his job though. So mm. I was I advanced so well, I was doing really well that mm. they was like, "Yo, can you be our director of photographer?" We like because basically director of photography, director of photography for that thing, basically sends out decides which photographer to send out to which events, which one will fit well in this kind mm. of event, and then I have to go through all of their photos at the end of the night. So make I sure be, and make quality. sure their mm. their photo, yeah, make sure that their photos are aligned with the club's photo mm. or with the club's expectations. Mm -hmm. So I have to see every single photo that comes through the club before it goes out. So that was a that was like a lot of responsibility on my right. half. So that was pretty cool, and I did that for about six, six, seven months. And then I was like, all right, I think I'm ready to kind of do my own thing. And, and wow. that's what happened. I just kind of bounced back. So after that, yeah, I just got, got started getting hired directly by the club and um, or directly by, you know, promoters and things like that. Mm -hmm. Things move fast in Atlanta, hey? No joke. Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, yeah. It literally, I went from not owning a camera mm -hmm. to being a director of photography in like 10 months. Wow. So, yeah, so it was, like crazy like that's another thing i like about atlanta was people kind of back in the day they really looked out for each other and mm. like i felt like i felt like having a net a good network could take you very far in atlanta very quickly mm, mm, mm. did you ever do um hired photo shoots or was it always event photography that was your thing uh so of course like being a photographer you want to do the photo shoots of the women and ladies mm -hmm. and things like that and you know so they, you i did a lot of that and i realized that it wasn't worth my time like okay. it just what i would like because like they weren't paying me it mm -hmm. was just for exposure mm -hmm. for them because mm -hmm. the, in my expo like nobody cares who the photographer is they mm -hmm. just want to see the chick yeah usually you know so i was just like it it wasn't lucrative enough for me to keep putting my energy into it it was good mm -hmm. it was good experience mm -hmm. it helped me figure out lighting and and, mm -hmm. and um and how they work, uh, uh, what do you call strobes and things yeah. like that. Like it, it really, it, that like that's one thing I'm I'm happy I did get the experience. And it helped me figure out how to work with lighting, daylight, and strobes and all that stuff. Because eventually that came in handy down the road when I was started doing other things. But yeah, it just never portraits was never really my focus ever. Mm. You no, know? mm. it was never. Mm. I can do them and I do them well now. But like initially that wasn't my focus. I was strictly mm. came in as events as okay. events and weddings and things like that like that's what i knew i wanted to do i like i just enjoyed music i enjoyed people and i knew how to talk i felt like i knew how to talk to people mm. and like meet people and that's what i was that's what i wanted to do like that's mm. what i wanted to be and i and also i've been going to music festivals like crazy up until that point like going to ultra music festivals so i was like i want to shoot a music festival and mm. so that was like and then i did like i started shooting like uh ultra music festival i shot EDC really? in Japan too, as well. Oh yeah, wow! Yeah, it I, was I, I, Ultra. I, 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 which which Ultra did you go to? 
I went to uh, Ultra Music Festival in Miami in 2000. Oh, wow. 10, 2011, 12, now, and 13. How was, how was that experience? Because I've, I think I've been to one Ultra and like the Ultra crowd are like about it, about it. Like they wait the entire year for Ultra. All three days, yeah. they pay that money. And like, <laughs> yeah. I got in it like right before the, this huge electronic festival bubble hit. Mm. Like it was like, the first year I went, man, I got a ticket for like a hundred and some dollars. But then fast forward two years later, it's like $500. Yep. And I'm like, man, like it just I'll, took I'll kind of changed the game though. Like they made everyone now do an after movie where it's the woman walking in slow motion, going to the party, <laughs> then the beat drops and ultra. I'll give that, uh, I think, uh, robot boy, no ultra kid, ultra kid mm. um, shoots their stuff. And they were some of the first people I saw using a red camera for, you know, oh, yeah. event, and I was like, hey, yeah. power to yeah. those, those Dutch boys don't play, hey, power to them. Yeah. yeah, so that was, that was like, so me going to Ultra was prior mm. to me having the camera, like mm. 2013 was when I just get, so my last okay. Ultra I went to was just when I just bought a camera. Mm. But then after that, shortly after that, a couple of years later, maybe 2014, I got, access to shoot counterpoint music festival oh wow and uh, where, i don't know where, if you where know. is that no, that's I'm in atlanta in atlanta it was okay. in atlanta it was in atlanta but the biggest like so at that festival was like j cole janelle Monae, mm. uh, big names big artists trinidad james trinidad oh, wow. james killer mike and outcast oh, wow. outcast was like the grand finale for that event so i got to shoot them as well Icons. So it was like a huge event yeah. yeah so that was my first festival i shot and then after that I went on, I shot like, imagine I shot Tomorrow World. Tomorrow World is oh, another wow. huge festival that came to Atlanta. There was They did it for two years hmm. and they had this huge debacle where it rained and people got like stuck overnight and freezing cold. It was, it was terrible. Fire, fire, fire festival, huh? Fire festival. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it, it was like great until the end. Yeah, it's just like everybody just, it literally the whole, like the camp, because it was shot, it was, I mean, not shot, it was like hosted on like some farmland mm. way out in the middle of nowhere and it just mm. wasn't set up for heavy rain and mm. like people's cars got stuck and people like no lights at night and it was it was terrible but like wow the people who went home and came back the next day it was fine and but the people that were there got stuck overnight oh no perms ruined sucked, but what a shame yeah yeah it was horrible publicity for them but yeah i shot mm. that festival then after that i did yeah, some other festival like Okeechobee or festival. Oh, wow. A couple other things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did uh, just a bunch of festivals. Like I did um, one festival in New Orleans. I can't even remember the name of it, but yeah, I did some. Urban episodes. Street Stranded <laughs> content, content. Yes. Yeah, wow. some. Yeah, that was another festival. So yeah, I just I just always wanted to do events because I love the mm. music and I love being around a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, so that's why like, okay. like I could do the, the portraits, but for me, it's just my passion was events at the time. Wow. Well, I, I must say, I find your story is extremely motivating and interesting. And I see why your marketing is so serious and why you have those like really well done business cards. You never know, you might, you might see a ludicrous or an ASAP Brocky and just take my card, take my card. I'll, I want to shoot, we'll shoot, we'll shoot. And yeah, just the, the powerful networking um, that you can, that you just have to be ready for. I think Will Smith uh, said it really well. You don't have to get ready if you're always ready. Right, right, right. So yeah, I, I keep my uh, very, uh, I guess, I, can I show you my business? Can I show the business cards off real quick? Just, I guess, yeah, I gra I'll yeah. grab them real quick. Smooth. I think even in the video, I'll put a screenshot um, off of your Instagram. All right. um, because I find you, uh, I'll, I'll put a screenshot as well from your Instagram of the right. business cards, because I find you, cu you curate. Um, oh, wow, those are looking stunning. So black on gold. Yeah, so eh? this is the this is the back right here. Oh, mm. uh, nice. Yeah, it's got it's, yeah, it's the gold font, gold um, gold plated. Yeah, but oh, wow. then on the front, each each individual card has a different image that I shot all over the world. Wow. So yeah, there's a wedding. So it, it, I do this because you know mm. there's d different people that are looking for different kind of photographers. So mm. you got your wedding group. You got like you know, hey, I need a billboard shot or something. There's a cityscape of Atlanta. Oh, sorry. Wow. I'm away from camera yeah you got your Atlanta then there's another wedding a different wedding and then I got some more stuff I got plenty here's a, here's a picture of future I took at the mm. festival and then you got you know wow. like just the, each one's different they got I, and they got like uh, 25 different designs yeah I got like some portraits what? in here here's the David just like a David Guetta I shot or whatever yeah. those Sorry, are stunning yeah. wow yeah 
and I got you know like some honeymoon stuff like that. You know, so just what, what depending the, on uh, who I'm talking to. Hmm. People, take notes. The man's <laughs> dropping game. He's dropping gems. This is how. This <laughs> I know is how everybody's gonna steal my idea now, man. This is gonna everybody's gonna steal my idea. So actually, I was at a. So I just got um kind of picked up by like a modeling agency out here, and mm. I gave them all my business card. And they were like, man. You like better in marketing than we are. Like we're gonna like steal <laughs> like, your yeah. idea. Like, we're, gonna, cool, cool. we're gonna steal your idea for our business. I was like, oh. it's okay. You, you will have come up with an even better one at that time. Like yeah, you, can, yeah. you can copy yeah, Jordan, good. but you'll never be him. He, when you get up <laughs> right, to where right. he is now, he'll be at the next level. Wow. Yeah, very, yeah, very, so, yeah. very, very incredible stuff. So just with this amazing movie, you're living in Atlanta, <laughs> New Orleans. What made you now say, okay, season two, Japan? I'm moving everything right. to Japan. How did that happen? All right. So about my last two years of living in Japan, mm. I mean, not living in Japan, living in Atlanta, mm. I started working with uh, um, Asian promoters mm. in the city of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So one of the guys was Korean. One of the guys was Vietnamese. One of the guys was Laos. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And so was it they rising? all... No, 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 no. Um, but um, believe it or not, um, one of the guys is really good friends with uh, what's the guy, the Ichima guy. Uh, okay. That's his name. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? Keith Ape. The Korean. Uh, Keith Ape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually met him. Yeah, yeah. So I was, yeah, that's a story with Keith Ape, mm -hmm. but I'll get to that later if we have time. But we yeah, got time. So, we got time. Um, this, this, uh, this is a long I, format show. <laughs> drop, games, drop game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh well, anyway, but yeah, I was working for these Asian promoters, and mm. so it, it kind of it just kind of randomly happened. I was working at nightclub. It was mm. uh, Velvet Room in Atlanta. Mm. You know, I know uh, maybe you've heard of Velvet Room. It's huge. I'm gonna look like it up. One Twelve, Jermaine Dupri. It's in oh, the wow. song. It's in the song. Uh, Welcome to Atlanta. I'm, I'm pretty oh, like. Okay, I'm gonna look it up. I'm in the Velvet I, Room. Yeah. I, I know Velvet Magic Room. City. <laughs> that's yeah. Major, that's yeah, all. So okay. so Velvet Room was the club I was working at, and like mm. one night I think it was a. Saturday, mm. Saturdays was Asian night or so, oh, wow. so whatever it is. So that it was like, it was, it was, yeah. Atlanta was kind of, it's also like that. It's like a lot of segregated parties. So like you get some mixed I'm in South Africa. Like Tell party. me about it. I'm oh, in yeah, South oh, Africa. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so yeah, but like mm. in Atlanta, you have like your Asian night, your white night, your black night, your Latin night. At yeah. the same club, but like a different night is like, nice. they want to hear their music and that's cool. Mm. They want to hear their music, but anybody is welcome, you know, but mm. they just want to hear the music that they like. Yeah. So Asian night was just basically EDM night. Asian night just happened to be EDM night. Mm. And the other, every other night at Velvet Room was black night for sure. Mm. Because like I said, Jermaine Dupri and all them was up in there. But, um, but yeah, so I just, I randomly got assigned to that club by that company that I was working for because one of the other photographers couldn't make it. Mm. And when I went in, it just eye opening. These people, these people at the club were completely different than what I'd been used to shooting in like African American mm. clubs. Mm. Like I'm talking like they were giving me drinks left and right. Like, here, man, have a drink. Cheers. Come drink with us. Like take a selfie with us. And like, you know, black people have never shared drinks with me at the club. I know that <laughs> like, feeling, eh? You know, after you take like, a good photo for them, then you show them on the screen and they're like, and they're like, yo, thank you, here's a shot. thank you, yeah. thank you. What's your Facebook? Can I add you? And you're like, well, people being nice yeah. to me. I'm used yeah, to, when I, I used to do event photography, huge bro, buck dudes who grab, hey, hey, take a photo. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You know, and that, I yeah. was like, that's what I was used to. Like, mm -hmm. like girls doing, like, they take a picture and they're like, all right, cool. And they just like, whatever. But they were like, so different than what I was used to. So I just like, man, I kind of like it here. So I kept like scheduling myself to work there <laughs> because I could do that. So I kept yeah. scheduling myself. And eventually like they just started to like me so much that they were like, yo, we don't want anybody but him. Like the organizers were like, we don't want anybody else but him. And like, they tried to send somebody else. And they were like, no, 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 no. We want him. Send like, don't send that other guy. Yeah. <laughs> we want him. Because I was staying there extra long. Like the other guy, he would go in for his hour and a half, two hours and bounce. Like I'm there all night. I'm getting there early. I'm there all night drinking with y'all. We're going to eat pho after the club and stuff, you know? Like we, we hanging. That's and the truth. When like, you get you good, want, eh? Yeah. When you actually like the people you're shooting, that's when you get yeah. really good. Yeah. And so from there, I started getting to know these people. And they were like, literally like, hey, can you come shoot my daughter's baby shower? Or like my daughter's mm -hmm. birthday party. Mm -hmm. Can you come shoot like my wedding? Like, you know, they started asking me to shoot stuff outside of the club. And I'm like, cool, cool, cool. And then from there, I met this lady who brings a Vietnamese artist over mm -hmm. to Atlanta for concerts. Her name is Michelle Lay from 3M mm -hmm. Entertainment. 
they hired me on as one of their, I guess their, their party photographers, they like mm. to call me. So I was the party man. I was a photographer, of course. They were always looking forward to my images, but they were more so looking towards the, for the energy I brought mm. with to their parties mm. as well, I know. So I, I hired and I started working at Vietnamese concerts. And I don't speak a lick of Vietnamese. I'm talking like full Vietnamese concerts, all Vietnamese, everybody there speaking wow. Vietnamese. I don't understand anything. There's Vietnamese food, mm. there's Vietnamese, everybody's Vietnamese. I'm the only black guy in like a 300 person party. Wow. And it's and I'm having a blast. I don't understand Vietnamese at all. I don't know the music, but I'm having a blast. They're having a blast. And, it, and I did that for two years. And so just working wow. in the, and then I did it the same thing for like Korean concerts, Laos concerts, things like that, like Korean shows and things like that and parties. And like, just from being around these, the, these people, this new environment, like I realized like they were traveling a lot, like all wow. of them, they would go home, they would go to Vietnam, they would go to Japan, they would go to Thailand, they go to all these different countries, all these people, they were like, they were like, cause at the time I didn't know a lot of black people that traveled. I just didn't like not a lot mm. of black people were traveling in it from Atlanta. Now there's a lot, like a lot, half the people I meet in Japan are from Atlanta almost. Wow. But um, at the time, just none of my friends were traveling. Like all of my friends were stateside to the end. <laughs> like they just trying to hit up the next party, but these, they were going out and traveling more. And I was like, all right, I want to kind of see what this is about. And that's why I took my, my big, my first big trip uh, was to go to Korea uh really? japan and then taiwan taiwan yeah wow wow that took one trip to v um uh, to uh brazil but that was with javier like javier mm. yeah he and javier went to brazil once but, um, sao paulo rio de janeiro uh, rio, actually oh rio, wow. rio, rio. Wow. i wish we had went to sao paulo i hear sao paulo is where it's at like rio is cool too but wild sao eh? paulo is where it's at i've never been but too wild oh yeah I, it was it, yeah it, it was fun <laughs> i'll say that i had a lot of fun yeah, expand it was, your mind it was, it was yeah. a lot of fun yeah wow. yeah no nah, it was cool it was cool it wasn't like during carnival or anything if mm. it was during carnival that would have been a completely different thing we just went mm. down there like just traveling like on some that was with the 5d food. mark ii i what I, I went down there to i took my t2 out down there because i was okay. i didn't want to bring the big the big butt baby down yeah. to that's your money maker you, 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 you they want to leave it there yeah, yeah. They, yeah they were telling me ah Crazy enough, Javier's camera got stolen at the club we were working at. <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Like, the, it's the craziest story behind that, though, is that how, how they, how they steal it. On, oh, my God. He put it on some girl he was trying to. I, I, I don't know if I should tell this story. Right. <laughs> it just in right. case he said. sees it. But yeah, he, said. yeah he, he gave it to a girl at the club. Of and course. she left with it. But of the course. crazy thing is, the crazy thing is he got her information. And the next morning, she texted him like, hey, she texted him Thanks. a picture of her with the camera. Thanks. No, no, no. But she gave it back. She gave it back. She gave it back. Oh, believe wow. it or not. She gave it back. But the way that it ended, we, we were like, thought we're never going to see this camera again. Yep. Because they were like, lovey-dovey. And he was like, I'm going to go to the restroom or something like that. Or she's like, no, I'm going to go look for my friend and just disappear. And we were like, oh, dude. We waited outside the club for hours. Trying that'll, to that'll, that'll, that'll really fuck up your night, eh? Oh, shit. Right? My camera. You know, but, oh, wow. but he got it back the next day. And believe oh. it or not that particular girl was actually a police officer, a Brazilian police officer. That's the only, probably the only reason he got it back because her real job was police. Like she was drunk in the club, but she was actually a Brazilian police officer from Sao Paulo. So she was just visiting Rio de Janeiro as a tourist too. So she was a police officer in Sao Paulo. And she was like, I got your That's camera. Lit, you can come pick it up whenever you want. That's wild. It man. was like- He should be a YouTuber, story. man. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got- this dude, like he, he's got so many stories. Like the stories life, I'm telling you are nothing compared. To, yeah, that's why he's my. He like everything I do is kind of like a shadow of what I, what he mm. was doing. Cause like he's that's where my original inspiration came from. Mm. But at but least yeah, he didn't like lose said, it like, at, least, at knife point, eh? You don't want to lose it in a dramatic no, 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 way. Where, like, like your yeah, camera, your life. Robbed, what is? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody robbed us, but the way we lost it was like dude, she stole his heart, eh? Fault. Yeah. She, she got <laughs> him emotionally. You gave it to. She 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 knew a man's weakness, eh? It was hilarious, but I'll, yeah. I'm full I'm of dumb stuff like that. Back. I used to do dumb stuff like that. Then I'm like, man, this camera is my life. I'm not trying to lose, <laughs> lose it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lose it all man, like this. I, no, I, when I tell you the amount of speed lights I've cracked in two for being stupid at the club, <laughs> like just like $300, there's $300, there's $150, there's $200. Every, I've, I've got, I think I, at least I've got at least five with me right now. Oh, and only man. one works. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, just at the club being drunk and like giving people your camera and they drop it or something like that yeah. you know i used to but, you I know used you... to. i stopped i stopped badly 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 hey and yeah. like i got a reality check and yeah. i just was like 
yeah I, I better grow up now yeah yeah but uh back to that yeah so yeah, the reason so i came on, japan, on the yeah. on the road the road to tokyo japan yeah you visit yes, yes, brazil yes, yes. and you're now you're like i yeah. want to so be based long next, term now. I, yeah. no 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 not even that i just my friend my, my vietnamese friend actually mm. he was like yo i'm gonna go to asia for a month you want to mm. come and i'm like yeah he's like my best friend at the time like we, we were kicking it like go bowling every thursdays i'm like yeah let's go and so i came and when i came we were like on completely different wavelengths like he was like foodie i'm gonna travel see these mm. temples and museums and stuff and i'm like i'm trying to party <laughs> like when i go so we didn't even hate like people didn't even really realize that we were together on the trip they were like yo you there with with home i'm like yeah i didn't know y'all were together i thought y'all were yeah. traveling separately because i only see your post at night and i only see his post at day and y'all never in the pictures together and i'm like yeah because yeah. he doesn't party and i don't wake up <laughs> that oh. early because i'm not but um yeah and i just came so i came man so i came over to um what was, was it, it? Was it oh yeah i went to korea first okay. no i went to korea first what was the first seoul. club in seoul that you went to i, I know seoul quite well do you go in Hongdae, like the park in Hongdae? Yeah, I was in Hongdae. I was in Hongdae. I was, you know, I was Did you Hongdae. go to Club yeah, Kukun? I went to Madholic. Madholic, Mad okay. A lot of gyopos, I think that was the Korean Americans go to Club Holic. There's a place in Itaewon. Itaewon is like the Korean version of Roppongi. There's a place in Itaewon yes, yes, it was. Yes. called King yeah. Club. And that King is Club. Okay. Ratchet Central, ground zero for all I, ratchet behavior. I thought you were going to say Thursday party. Is it a place called Thursday party? Do you know that? What what year were you there? Like that Thursday, might be Thursday party. Oh, uh, 2016. Okay, nah, that might be a new one. Like it, I was no. there a, a couple of years before. No. In, Itawa, in Itaewon, there's also a place called Club UN, and that's where a lot of your US military guys go. And the U.S. So military guys that. brought that ratchet hip hop. They brought the yeah. culture fresh. Uh, I got into hip hop seeing it off of TV, but yeah. when you meet oh, people yeah. oh, okay. who are bring it to you fresh, you see it in a very yeah. different way. Right. So, so yeah. I personally, I was trying to stay away from America because I was out of the country for yeah. like a for not for the first time, mm -hmm. but like on my own like on the on the school thing i was with a group of 30 people mm -hmm. in brazil it was like six of us together so we didn't really need to meet new people and, and you also develop an eye but, for trouble like when you see just certain low vibration behavior you're like all right cool dude's mm -hmm. swearing he's mm -hmm. got his in, in enough face tattoos okay cool cool yeah. cool oh. yeah yes exactly so i'll, I'll be on my way so like but I, when you're naive okay. like me that's where you go let's go let's go no 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 so yeah i was i was averse to all that i had been working in the club at this point for four for three four years for mm. maybe maybe yeah three four years mm. so i was like i know what to look for in the club what's okay. gonna start trouble and whatnot at this point like this is after like this is right like so i went there in 2016 in mm. september it was my birthday trip so september mm. and by march i had moved to japan so this was very recent what is yeah, your like opinion of march, korean I, parties do they get down oh man it way better they go in way more than japan yeah way Koreans more than japan for in. sure i met people who go there just to shuffle dance the whole night that's the plan <laughs> they bring water backpacks and vans shuffle dance the whole oh, night man. they leave the rubber on the shoes even done <laughs> let's do it again next day and they don't stop i remember i never went home before like eight or nine yeah. like i remember i was out just out drinking until nine in the morning every night over there that was like finish. yeah Ugh. Yeah, it was like, yeah. but it's uh, luckily there's a lot of uh, footage on Instagram and Snapchat at the time. Snapchat, because like, I wouldn't remember half of that stuff that happened. It's crazy, but yeah, it's. I'm trying it's, to forget my. I'm trying time. to forget my memories. They were too crazy. Now See, because you, you, you can't you focus and do, and do normal stuff. I'm like, oh, the music is still in me. Uh, you're trying. To, I'm trying <laughs> to forget it all and just be nice, logical, sane uh. person. Yeah, uh, uh, they go too yeah, wild. Eh? Still, Even the outfits, I'm, I'm the, still, the, the the party people wear some of the tightest skirts i've ever seen i was just like no it doesn't make sense no everything is how will i everything go back to normal was, life yeah. after this like it's yeah like, it's, go, it's like a k-pop video it's just oh so wild my God. in hd so this is yeah can you imagine though going from you probably know but like mm. going from korea seoul mm. to tokyo it was Good night and day it was night and day. I expected, I was like, I was like partying it up in Korea. I'm like, I'm ready to get down, like get yeah. to Tokyo. Nobody's dancing. <laughs> no. It hits you like, different though. Even like the whole Japanese sort of like vibe. Now that I'm like 
now that uh-huh. I'm in Cape Town and I've become more introspective, I'm trying to just analyze everything and be like, why is it that way? Look at the history. Look at it. Mm-hmm. How did Japan get into clubbing and night culture? And mm-hmm. I kind of get it. Japan is a, it's a different game. It's, um, yeah. It's Coke like, and Pepsi. Yeah, the, the, like it's way, it's way more conservative over here. That's just I'll just say that. Yeah, you know that. It's, do you really think more it's more conservative? conservative? I think In Japan's public. way Japan's way of being ratchet is different to the Korean way of being ratchet, which is different to the American way of being ratchet. But human beings, the human experience, we do ratchet things. That's what human beings. That's just how we are. And Japan's way of doing I, it is different. Like you mean like Shibuya meltdown? That's that. That's their ratchet. Different. Their Have ratchet. you ever gone to <laughs> Gas Panic? <sighs> You don't seem like a gas panic person, but it's like I am not a gas panic person. But I went that first time I came to Tokyo. I was I was in gas panic that first time. They get it in, uh, okay? Club Line, like in, in Roppongi. Club Line, yeah. I went to both of those. My first that that, but it's like, like when I was in Japan. Yeah, the first time yeah. for the first time in Tokyo. That's the first I time I saw really, a Japanese I, girl twerking, and I was just like, oh, okay, they twerk. Yeah, okay, cool. Mm-hmm, okay, I see culture, and it's like yeah. Japan's way of doing it is just slightly different. Like, mm-hmm. but they get it in, like. Hmm. But that's not all Japanese. That's that's definitely an exception, I believe. Like line and yeah. Yeah, gas panic are, okay, are yeah. complete. I'm, I'm using extreme examples, but it's like yeah, those are extreme examples of for if people that don't know yeah. what gas gas panic and line club are. It's visit it. It's it's be like the, a, your best experience in Japan. Go immediately. First thing as soon as you get off the phone, go straight <laughs> to gas panic. If you, yeah, if you like ratchetness, yes, yeah. that's if that's <laughs> youth culture. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. They used to have Youth a culture. pizza spot above it, eh? That pizza spot used to be in my place, eh? Oh, wow. I can't do it. Uh, I, could, I couldn't nice do things. it. You know, because I was, like, I was, I came in on a different mindset, though. Like, when mm. I first moved, like, I had already been a photographer in nightlife for so mm. long. I knew what nightlife has to offer, and I knew that gas panic was not where I wanted to be long-term kind of thing for me. Like, for so me, starting so, place. I don't think anyone can do gas panic long-term, eh? Unless, yeah, unless so, I own like shares in the Gas Panic and Club Line franchise, but yeah, it's, it's always yeah, a no starting way. point. You don't know any Japanese. You're looking for something yeah. quick and easy and fast. Yeah, that's yeah. It's like and you the graduate to cheap, A life. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was trying to yeah. That's where I was trying to get. So my first, actually these business cards right here, mm. the ones I just showed you, were the re- might have been part of the reason I got my job in Harlem. So that, oh. like a week after moving to Japan, mm. I met, I, I talked to the photographer who was working there that night. Mm. Do and, you remember his name? Oh, uh, yeah. I get this. Oh, no. Local guy. Local or foreign guy? Yeah, he's Japanese. He's Japanese guy. Oh, my God. Why can't I remember his name? Girl, he left to go to Belgium. That's why I, like, we didn't get to hang out. Mm. Like, I literally, like, I met him. Actually, I would met him mm. once when mm. I was here for that week. Cause mm-hmm. I went to Harlem like three times, but mm-hmm. I met him and then I was like, Hey, and I told him, I was like, I'm coming back to Japan. And he's like, Oh, I'm only gonna be here like a week. I'm moving mm-hmm. to Belgium. And I'm like, Oh no, life, you, yeah. you were my, like, he was my connection. Like he was the yeah. only Japanese person I had met mm-hmm. there, like here, like the only Japanese person that I thought was cool. And like, I mm-hmm. wanted to kick it with, and I was like, you were going to be my connection. He's like, but yo, I saw, but on that way, I was like, but by the way, who's taking your job at like Harlem or whatever. He's like, nice. Nobody. He's like, I was like, you want it? He's like, you want it? I was like, sure. I need I money. Like, yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. And he was like, okay, just come through one night and I'll introduce you to like the organizer of the nice. event I'm shooting. I'm like, cool. So I went there and I talked to the organizer, Maria, mm. uh, Maria Abe. And she introduced me to like um, DJ Hokuto, DJ Fuji Trio, and a couple other people who I mm. don't remember. I, I probably know them, but I don't remember if mm. it was them. The night I met them that night or not. Mm. But I didn't have my cards on me at the time. Mm. I, I was like, I'm meeting these people. I'm like, oh my God, I don't have my card. So look, yeah. so I literally leave the club. I'll be like, I'm mm. right back. I leave the club, run to my Airbnb that's like all the way like boss level. That's hell. a CEO level I'm decision. Running. Like I have to do I it. Run and run and put run it all on the line. I'm yeah. Sweating. I ran, I come back. I'm so, like, I'm like, here's yeah. my business card. And I showed them little gold plated business mm. cards and I'm talking and like next day they were like hey so uh do you want to like be our photographer starting in june or july i'm like yes yes <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> i'm like yes and so from there it just like kind of like i just started meeting more people more and more people more and djs and word of mouth and uh through another friend of mine who's mm. japanese uh canadian I, I, don't, mm. I don't know if he was born in japan or canada but he's a japanese mm. dj named baby mm. you he introduced me to the djs over at a life dj sarah dj braze 
Mm. And we all just had dinner one night or at a bar. Or like, we had like drinks in the bar. And he was like, yeah, you should meet these guys. They're really cool. And so I connected with them. And then like every weekend I would just go to A-Life to try and like hang out with them. And they like, they they would put me in, you know, the, the VIP and the DJ booth. And just like, I'm living a life. I got no money, but they're like, yo, come in the booth. A-Life is a vibe though, right? Eh? university yeah, students really and it looks yeah. really cool and you're just meeting people from places yeah. around the world yeah that was the hey man where that was you the from? closest thing i'd say yeah. that was the closest thing i'd say to an authentic american style party that was the closest mm. i could get to it so but in that but i say that to say this because when mm. i was there I, another same thing happened in harlem i met the photographer there and me and him linked and we went and did a shoot together and then he was like nice. he brought also not only did he do a life he did camelot and oh, he wow. was like hey i don't really want to do this gig camelot can you do it and i'm like sure so this was a one-off thing and then he was like you know what i'm not gonna work this whole month i'm gonna be in another country shooting something can you work it i'm like sure and then next thing you know Guys they're moving, just coming straight hey? directly to me people they're in japan coming straight travel, directly hey? to me. like I, yeah. I, I i had a, such a similar experience of when you ask people what are you doing and Tokyo almost forces you to like up your hustle because when you're mm -hmm. around people moving slowly, you think it's normal to move slowly. You're like, oh, right. one day I'll do this. Tokyo people yeah. are like, next week I'm doing it. I'm in Hawaii this week. I'm coming back, Spain, yeah. New York. And guys spend mad money and make mad money. And that yeah. also just forced me to really, it, 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 yeah. it was only when I've met a New Yorker and I found a lot of New Yorkers have that mentality. It's like you live life at like a very, mm. very high level. You get burnt speed, out. Yeah. yeah, you get burnt yeah. out, but like you're living life at like, yeah. Yeah. But like, so I, I was I was saying that to myself the whole time mm. I was over here. I was like, man, why am I still in Tokyo? Because like if I put the same amount of effort in in, in Atlanta, mm. shh, I'd be sky is limit. You know, if I went back to Atlanta with the same hustle I'm yeah. using in Tokyo, mm -hmm. it'd be crazy. But now my hustle is starting to pay off over here. So I'm mm -hmm. not ready to leave it yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, initially, after that first year, I was like, man, I'm working so hard and don't seem like a lot is improved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I'm not really getting anywhere. And it's like, but like I had like a couple clubs I was shooting at, but it wasn't too consistent. But mm -hmm. then after that, it just kind of I was like, you know what? I'm going to stick it out one more year because I don't want to leave as a mm -hmm. failure. I don't want to not a failure, but like I don't want to leave not having accomplished everything I wanted to do yeah. while I was here. True. And so I'm glad I did stay because after that I got on and doing a lot more stuff like the Tantra thing and all of that stuff. Yeah. I know I know you changed cameras at one point. So you had a Canon 5D Mark II, then I think yeah. you shot it to the last shutter click. Then you're like right now yeah. uh 60 Mark II. Yeah, what I got a 60 transition. I got a 60. I got a 60 actually before the 161 and then then I got a 60. I literally just ran those cameras into the ground, my bro. Wow. Like the 5D doesn't turn on anymore. The 6D has is the, the shutter's broken and like giving them to them club girls. Then though. the girls hold the trigger on trigger mode, it finishes everything. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now I'm shooting with the six two with the six two for now. Like yeah. I don't want to invest in anything too expensive because I am still working at nightclubs and I know. Yeah. yeah. That's one, one, still if I drink, get of, one neon light hitting your sensor at the wrong time. And that's your mm -hmm. yeah. next one. Mm -hmm. oh. Yep. 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 That's very true. So I'm using the, the 62 right now. A lot of people have been getting a mirrorless thing, but I don't know if I'm going to do that. I just like the weight of having the mm. full body and the full frame sensor with the, with the cap, with the, mm. and also if something happens in your screen, you kind of fuck. True. true. <clears throat> I think the, like, I like having it. Yeah. So, so you like having the, I like having a viewfinder. Oh, see it live. Like I like, I yeah, I like having a viewfinder. Wow. And I think that, I don't know, I don't know, this might just be a myth that I'm making up, mm. but people with good eyesight make great nightlife photographers mm. a lot of the time. Mm. Mm. So, like, 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 so like you have, if you can see things or I don't know if it's just your perception or your, or what the thing, the way you see things, but like, like, when I'm at an event and I'm looking at an other photographer shooting, I'm like, man, this dude is missing out on so many awesome things that he could be getting. Like, <clears throat> I just went to an event recently and like, it was an event for necklaces. Like the, they had made some necklaces mm -hmm. and they had a photographer there, but I could tell, I was like, this guy's new, like he's fresh because he was missing all the good shots. Like, like yep. the, the, the creator of the brand was putting a necklace on somebody and I'm like, Hey bro, get that. I literally tapped him. I was like, Hey, you should get that shot. I think he wants that oh, wow. shot. Like they're paying you. <laughs> <laughs> like you think he wants that shot, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was and missing he's still all the shots. The trigger. He's still checking yeah. settings after yeah, every he, shot. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Let's yes. try one more. One more, one more. Okay. I, I think that's okay. Picture. 
and he's using the flash on camera flash yeah it was it was bad but uh yeah I was just like, hey, but you don't want to burn the guy is, you don't want to burn him you just want to be like, like yeah and no, i was trying to help him yeah no he's cool i knew i just knew he was you know a beginner so mm. but then i saw i after i started oh, sorry talking, i think I my excited. camera's frozen uh oh oh wow we've been going for a minute eh uh, it's been an incredible conversation i uh, i think yeah. i better just change my batteries <laughs> oh man so funny thing eh? i'm actually using my dslr as a web camera and um oh that's dope canon released the uh software recently to okay uh i was wondering why you had bokeh on your on your uh yeah, video man. africa <laughs> africa is coming up eh we're doing we're doing amazing <laughs> things now hey what's going on okay anything come on cat i'm just gonna try to turn it off and turn it on again i'll see if that helps yeah it's probably have to turn it off and turn it on again probably has a limit okay off on back in business anything okay so yeah it's this eos webcam utility yeah and um yeah, you can download it off if you when you uh, I think you uh, update your that. camera. Yeah, hmm, I have that. No oh, way. Hey, this is kind of strange. Why is it doing this? Okay, it's I'll, like smaller now. Really strange. <laughs> it's all good. I can see you unless you want to make it just to make it bigger. Ah, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Um, I think we've gone on for like we've had an awesome conversation. We've gone on for an hour thirty minutes. Um, I still have some questions left, but I don't want to keep you up. Yeah, the go whole ahead, night. man. Let's burn it. Let's um, burn it now. You burn through the questions, man. Okay. Uh, I really wanted to know for someone who's been in Japan for quite a bit and been shooting, what are some must-see uh, photo locations or video locations in uh, in Japan? Um, it depends on what you're into, but like mm. t literally every square inch of Tokyo is photogenic. It's mm. or in Japan it can mm. be photogenic. Everything is photogenic. Like even the abandoned houses, even the little rundown neighborhoods, everything mm. is so photogenic because it's so much crammed into such a little space. Mm. The nature is photogenic, but um, for must see tourist or like a photographer, or I'll say photography. Like, I'm spots, a shooter and I want to shoot something. Where would you be I like? Mean, it's literally photo. man. Okay, you got you got the little stairwell at uh the Tokyo Tower, of course. That's okay. one of my favorite spots to shoot. Anybody who wants an, a dope shot in Tokyo. How did you there. find that spot? Because I tried to find it for a good six months till eventually I found someone who could show me where it was. But I'd always go there and I'd be like, "Where's that place? These people are taking pictures. Where is this place?" Uh, and it's so frustrating, I, eh? I don't even remember who told me about it, but Man, I, know I saw it. Taiwanese all... tourists are there. When I saw Taiwanese tourists gathering, and I was like, oh, "Wait, they know something." And there's like a, mm. they have a forum. It's in all in Taiwanese that uh, they talk about. If you go to Japan, you must take a picture there. And I'm yeah, like, that's like the ah, best spot. Yeah, you got to put a picture of that spot. You got to use the picture I, I took. Of it. <laughs> you got to put that on on the video. Uh, it's that on my Instagram. The spot that is Japan. Yeah, that's that's. Like, the, that's the best spot. Uh, so that's the best spot to get a good picture. But you got Shibuya crossing it, of course. And for anyone watching uh, to find that spot, you need to go to the car park. You go into the car park, and that is the stairwell to the car park. And yeah. I never knew that. I was walking around yeah. the tower trying to find it. It's not next nah, to yeah, the you, tower. You got to go to it. Yeah. It's next to like Follow the cars. some really fancy restaurant. Yeah, it's next to some really fancy, mm. right behind the fancy, fancy restaurant mm. with like a, a garden in it. And follow the and tourists. Like, you All see the tourists it, are going there. It's crazy because nobody there are no tourists here now, but if when the tourists uh, do come back, yeah, like literally now it's just empty, but like if when the tourists come back, it'll probably be full oh, again. But uh yeah, that I'd say that. Um obviously you have to go to uh if you're in Kyoto, you have to go to, you know, Kinko uh Ginkakuji, Kinkakuji. Kinkakuji. The red uh, uh, red gates for Fushimi Nari. No, for Shimi Nari. For yeah. Shimi Nari is like yeah. that's like Instagram bread and butter. Like you gotta yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta get that. That the for Shimi Nari is probably the biggest one. The red gates. Um, mm. Yeah, I'd say yeah. Because when the tourists come back, it's gonna be packed. See, luckily I went during COVID and there was nobody there. Like literally nobody. I I took a time lapse of me walking through for Shimi Nari. Not <laughs> one single person in the video for oh, wow. about five minutes of video like come on guys social distancing social distancing like, yeah 
there's nobody in there but oh when i went but uh i got very lucky i i yeah i got extremely lucky to get get, get my photo shoots off but um yeah that another place um have you been yeah, to uh awesome. drunken alley in Shinjuku? yes I was, oh, I was just about yeah. to say oh i was gonna say the one in shibuya but yeah that the one in shibuya i like better than the one really in okay it's wider it's wider and many people the one it, actually it's just more for me the sign they have like little signs hanging down for all mm. the shops that's mm. really photogenic mm. and like the like the the depth of field makes mm. it look really cool mm. and it has like a little uh they have like the little red lamps hanging mm. in the middle like mm. right down the middle it looks extreme the one in shibuya looks extremely oh, wow. nice the one in shinjuku is okay they do like little decorative things depending on the season mm. but that one it's better lit mm. especially for photo for specifically for shooting without a flash Mm. I like it. I like it a lot, man. Mm. It's more mm. narrow, like it's a little more narrow, so that you get that really good depth of field, like mm. with the with the, all the stuff lined up right behind you. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like that's that's why I like it particularly. I'd survive, like, I got yeah. some photos on the Instagram as well. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There's any uh, any good so rooftops? Any rooftops you recommend? Uh, Not a rooftopper. Crazy. That you, that's crazy that you say that because the photographer that I met at Harlem, that's what we met on. That's the tip we met on. I was like, yo, you know any cool rooftops I can shoot on? And he gave me one, right? And so that's why I went up there um, when I was here for that week just traveling. Mm -hmm. I went up there and I was like, man, this is dope. And I took some of my friends up there. We drink right. tequila on the roof and stuff so like trade, that. Trade, I, trade secret? Yeah, I, I, I can't even describe. Oh, actually, okay. I could. But it's, it's been, it's been uh, what do you call, uh, barbed wired up now. Oh man. Okay. I think my but camera, it, I'll tell you. Is, my camera is, uh, is, 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 is tired and yeah. I think, um, I'm going to edit this one and we might have to do a part two to, oh, man. Okay. because there's, right, there's well, some, some amazing yeah, I'll, information. I'll, yeah. I'll finish that rooftop story then just yeah. real quick. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, people so, comment uh, below, comment below if you want to find out this rooftop. So <laughs> we want to see who are the real people watching. And we'll Man. find that. But I gotta yeah, say they, they, a big thank you to Disco Motherfucking Cigarettes. Yo, awesome, thank you awesome for interview. Me. Long yeah, format. It went, We're gonna talk mad shit and other <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, it went on. It went on. Uh, you know, just get into it. It was a good vibe, man. Good talking <laughs> with you, bro. Learned learned quite a bit, eh? You'd be amazed yeah. the people you know. And if you just mm. sit and talk to them, the amazing things they've been through and you'll be like wow that is that is yeah. no joke gang eh? man we just scratched the surface we got into, we're still like in my first week in tokyo right now <laughs> like our first month in tokyo i was like yeah we got a lot man yeah so mm -hmm. yeah feel free to let me know we can do this again anytime yeah. bro i need to visit atlanta i need to go to magic city i need to get my that's photography what everybody, that's, what everybody <laughs> says, man. that's what everybody says man atlanta's, well, atlanta's where it's at but man just just make sure you you, you come just be safe man atlanta has yeah. changed since i've been gone and i know it but it's still it's still a lot of fun i know it's still a lot of fun good people good food there's good uh vibes. there's one yeah. japanese chick there she's a photographer and she lives Aki, in Aki, atlanta my, yeah yeah Aki, yeah Aki. yeah she, she can't she's my best she's like my best friend oh yeah. wow i, have a, I, I just my best follow yeah, what we, she's we, doing and i'm just yo, like culture yo, get this culture, out. Get, culture. Stop, yeah stop 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 mm. we met at fuck yes me and her for real she was photographed she was photographed i started working for the guy who used to do the photo booths like after i became freelance he hired me to do his photo booth so i started working at that photo booth that got me so into photography wow. and i met her my first night working at at, at, at that party you're the and real networker huh she, you about that he came he came to tokyo and mm. she stayed in my apartment for a week here wow. <laughs> Yeah, so wow. she's my like my we're like really good friends. I DJed at her. She threw an event about Atlanta in Tokyo while mm. she was here, and I DJed at that event. Insane. Actually, I have a picture. I have a picture that she printed out for me of a strip of at Magic City. Hold on. Oh, for real, for real. I've been I've been sorry, bro. I've been saying I'm gonna get it um, mm. framed for the longest, but mm. he gave me this photo right here that she oh, took. Oh, that City. is culture. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Now that pick is wild, eh? She yeah, is not shy at all, eh? Yeah. So she, <laughs> like, she took this picture and she gave it to me after that event and uh, after the Atlanta event she did here. She is about the yeah. culture. All the way. Yeah. 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 I, I miss her, man. I, I can't wait to either get back or oh, have man. her come back over once all this is over. Insane. Eh? We didn't even cover freaking Speakeasy. I met you at Speakeasy, and I'm like, oh well. <sighs> Yeah. Part two, That's part so much, two, yeah. a part two yeah, will be in the works. Two, man.
Yeah. All right, man. I'm okay. looking forward to it. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's been an awesome week. Sorry yeah. about all the delays trying to actually sit oh, down no and match time zones. No worries. Yeah. My, hey, it was mine too, man. You yeah. know, the life. <laughs> life but gets we, in the way. Yeah. We got an awesome episode. And yeah, shout out to all the viewers watching. Travel when travel is possible. Make awesome photos, awesome videography. And we are out. All right.